Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and today I'm here with Natalie because it's one of our favorite 15. Natalie, do you remember this panel? This is a it just one. took off like crazy. So I brought the original one right here to show you guys. So we did the attic window and we did it with this deer panel. And I can't even tell you how many pa of these panels we sold. People were so excited about it. Mm -hmm. And it was such a fun tutorial. And because it had such huge success, we brought it back for the favorite 15. And so we decided to do it a little different. So this one has its own pattern. This one will also have its own pattern, but it's basically still an attic window. So let's take a look at the panel we used back here. So we decided we would go with this cool haunted house panel, and we just did the attic window block around it. It's the same block. It just looks really cool, but we're gonna do some tips and tricks on this to show you some easier ways to do things. So to make this quilt, you're going to need fabric that is a light, a medium, and a dark. And of your light fabric, you're going to need one and a half yards. And that's for your, they did the border out of this and the bottom of the sill. You know, you want that light to shine off the bottom of the sill. And so then for your medium, you're going to need half a yard. And for your dark, you're going to need three quarters of a yard. Your backing is three and a quarter. And it's, you know, obviously it's whatever you want or one and three quarter yards of a 108. Now, the panel that we used is called Wicked Eve Haunted House Panel, and it's by Timeless Treasures. And I just wanna show you the panel right here. That's so cool. Isn't that so fun? All right, so how you make an attic window quilt when you're working with a panel, for me, it's about the math, and I wanna make it easy. So this panel measures Let's see what it measures here. Where is oh, our... You need the edge? I do need the edge right here. Okay. So this measures 43. Now 43 is not divisible by a whole number. So I would cut this to 40 because then I can have eight inch squares, right? And then I'm just going to cut it eight inch strips and get my blocks out of that. So then the width on this is 25 and we want to go to 24. And the reason is, is because you can get a block that's six by eight. So you're going to cut this in eight inch strips and then cut six inch blocks. And you want to trim that panel before you start cutting your blocks because otherwise, you know, you don't want one block that's, you know, off. Mm -hmm. So you just want to make sure that your panel. Well, that way you can kind of center it up if you want right, to. Right. And you can figure out what part you want in the window. And if, you know, maybe you want to have more of the top of the panel right. cut off the bottom. Exactly, so just take a look at it and see where you wanna make those cuts. So then we end up with a block that is six by eight and all of our blocks should be the same. So then what we're gonna do is whatever size your block ends up. So if you decide you wanna use a Christmas panel, I mean, this, mm -hmm. this will work for any panel, um, but you, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your medium, light, and dark fabrics are the size that you need. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a this sashing block on the bottom. And this is our sill. This is our window sill. And this is the light fabric. And it's two and a half by six. Do you, um, do you worry about whether you misplace which parts of the panel are where? Do you ever do like row one, window pane one, two, three, four, or anything like that? So what I pretty much do when I do it is I literally have it laying out and I pick uh -huh. up this block and make this block and, and set it back it in. Right back. But okay. it would be really easy. I was just curious it would be really easy because to like, mark with this it. looks yeah. like, oh, it's a tree branch, but is mm -hmm. that the top of the tree or the right. middle of the right. tree? I would worry about mixing that, that up. That is a great point to point out. And you know, you can actually go row one, block one. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, I mean, you could easily do that with a sticky note or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So this sill always goes on the bottom of your block because it's the light. You want it reflecting the light. It's right here and this reflects the light so it looks like you're looking in the house. And doesn't this look so cool? Mm -hmm. I think this is a really fun one. Yeah. So we're going to put this on and that's two and a half inches uh, by six. All right, Natalie, if you'll iron that, that would be awesome. Sure. So once you iron this, now you're gonna measure the block 
and know how tall it is because then you're going to put your side your side piece on right here and it should be it should be the same height so how tall is this how tall is this then should be eight now no, now 10 yeah so now it's 10 so then this piece over here is going to come here and you'll notice on on all of these the attic window traditionally this is a mitered corner mm -hmm. well we're making it easy for you so what we're going to do is we're going to take our light fabric and we're going to turn it it's a two and a half inch square the same size as your strip we're going to draw a line diagonally and we're going to do it so that it it points away from the block so it comes down like this so it looks mitered but it's really easy that's so cool so uh, that's uh, my little trick for this you know I like to I like I like to do the shortcuts so there you go trim it you off. can trim that off and press it back okay and then we will add it to this side and we're always adding to the left the bottom and the left I guess if your windows were going the other way, they could be different, but. Yeah, as long as they're all the same. Yep. So then I'm just gonna lay this right sides together here and sew it down. It's a really great use of panel. Well, for one, it makes the quilt, the panel or quilt, whatever it is you're working on, mm -hmm. a lot bigger than it started That's true. out. That's true. And for two, when you're done surrounding these blocks, it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually really done. Yeah. All right, so now the next thing we're gonna do is, this is actually a sashing, but it also looks like the outside wood of the window. So we're gonna add a sashing to this side of that as well. And we are gonna add this to the other side to the right hand side of this so that when you put it together they line up and then this outer this then this piece right here becomes the little outer border the frame of our window if you will so we're just going to go ahead and sew this down quarter of an inch and i'm just going to line it up so this is a 10 by one and a half inch strip And again, you can use any color fabric. Just remember it's a light, a medium, and a dark. And then we've got this, lots of this sewn together here. We're gonna show you how we put the whole thing together. So we have, <laughs> we have this row right here. And Natalie, so when you're asking about the, how things go together. The top, there Yeah, it is. so that's the top row. It fits right into the tree right there. Cool. And so what we're going to do is we are going to attach this to that top row. Mm -hmm. And so what we're so going to do. You just to clarify, you only added this little sashing to the, these first three blocks. This one doesn't have one because you're going to border I'm all gonna the way border around the whole with thing. the Yeah, border. and also there will be a sashing that comes in here as well. Awesome. That's very yeah. cool. So it comes together really fun. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna sew this on here and this will be our row. And there are four blocks across on this attic window. And um, again, that depends on the size of your panel. All right, Nat, go ahead and press this open. Okay. And we'll see this row. All right. Now we can't really add it because we need a sashing that goes across the top and I did not bring that with us today, but you can see on these other rows how it happens. So here's, here's, our, here's our row and here's our sashing. So when you, get, when you go to add your row on right here, you're gonna put this little sashing in between right here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do when you do that is you're gonna to wanna to pin this in here and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these two, that your sashing lines line up row to row like this, that they just line up right together. So when you put this on here, you're gonna to wanna to pin, and it's only an inch and a half, so you can see very clearly when things come together and when they don't, because you know the worst thing is if, when they're off just a little bit and you don't want that. So let's look at the quilt behind me. So we finished the top row and we've added this on, we've added this sashing in between every row like this. Then we've bordered it with an inch and a half piece, sashing piece out here, and it becomes the first little inner border. And I think that really sets apart 
your, um, your panel from it. And then we put this outer border in out here. And I love, we quilted it with spider webs. Can you see all the little spider webs on here? That's because so cool. it's, the, it's a spooky, scary one. The back, we put this cute plaid uh, black and gray on the back. You can see the spider web on that. And then on this binding out here, we just used the same, we brought in the same dark brown color. Just mm -hmm. makes it really cute. So Natalie, what size does this end up? It's 47 by 64. So it's a great wall hanging or door cover. Really cute, yeah. Oh, I love the It'd door cover cute, idea. Yeah, cute for a baby quilt even if you had some fun little... Oh my gosh, so you could use little squares that you know, we're baby oriented. A lot of times you'll get a panel that has little squares cut out. Yeah. And now you know how to make little windows around all those little squares. <laughs> so this was such a popular one. We really enjoyed it. Shall we hold up that uh, original. original one again? Yep, yep. So now there are two patterns for how to make um, attic window quilts. But we have the original you just know and the vertical. This one is the vertical. Uh, sorry, the, the new pattern. This, this is not vertical. We need to flip it. Oh, is it, it upside so down? <laughs> Sideways? The poor deer. So this is the attic window with, um, this is just the regular attic window. Uh -huh. And then this one is the vertical attic window. And so, so what, I, what I would just recommend really quickly is if you look on the back of the pattern when you're looking through, this one is for a, a bigger panel that's mm -hmm. more square. And this is for a more vertical panel that's, that's exactly narrower right. and longer. So you may pick the pattern that you need based on the size of your panel. That's exactly right. So we've given you some options and there's lots of different ways to work with a panel and make an attic window quilt. And we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on one of our favorite 15s from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.